In this video, I'm going to explore a range of responses to the question about how Dickens presents Scrooge as an outsider to society, which appeared in the AQA English Literature Sample Set of Papers. If you're studying A Christmas Carol with either OCR or Edexcel, this video will still be helpful, as the questions have pretty much the same structure, where you are invited to first consider how something is presented in an extract, and then how it is presented in the novel as a whole. The exam paper, including the extract, can be downloaded from the AQA website at the following address. And I've provided a link in the description section under the video. In the AQA paper, the question is as follows. Starting with this extract, how does Dickens present Scrooge as an outsider to society? Write about how Dickens presents Scrooge in this extract, how Dickens presents Scrooge as an outsider to society in the novel as a whole, 30 marks. Please note that this is not an exhaustive answer, nor is it an exemplar. These are just some ideas for you to consider incorporating into your own responses by adding to what you have already covered in class. The novella is a Christian fable about love, charity and goodwill, which takes place on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It sets out Scrooge's spiritual journey and a metamorphosis from a misanthropic outsider who shuns, and is in turn shunned by, society, to a philanthropist, who becomes instead a person who is both valued and esteemed. At the beginning of the extract, Dickens uses pathetic fallacy to communicate Scrooge's personality. He suggests that Scrooge seems to be almost preternatural in the way that external heat and cold had little influence on him. The alliteration in the image, no warmth could warm, nor wintry weather chill him, emphasises the way in which he does not seem to be affected by the natural elements around him. He doesn't react to them in the same way that a normal human being would. This serves as a metaphor to convey the way in which external forces have little impact upon him. Dickens uses language in this way to convey how Scrooge has become so hardened that not only does he feel very little emotionally, it has become so much a part of who he is that he does not feel anything physically either. Dickens continues to illuminate Scrooge's character by personifying qualities of bad weather and comparing him to them. He is depicted as bitterer than the wind, more stubborn than falling snow, and as implacable as the pelting rain. At the end of the first paragraph, Dickens reveals that the heaviest rain, and snow, and hail, and sleet only gets the better of him in one respect. Note the use of polysyndeton in this image to stress the range of severe weather conditions. Dickens also uses wordplay in the double meaning of came down handsomely, which not only means to literally fall from the sky in plentiful amounts, but also means metaphorically to accept with humility that you are wrong, to ironically portray how haughty and dogmatic Scrooge is. This is illustrated in the extract where it is shown that Scrooge has shunned society for so long that it now shuns him. Dickens lists the various types of people who actively avoid him, the reactions of whom get increasingly extreme. His demeanour is so unwelcoming that it is as though he exudes a warning to stay away. He is shown not to be well liked, as nobody ever stopped him in the street with gladsome looks to ask after his health or to invite him to call on them. He is given a wide berth by even the most needy. Even other outsiders, such as beggars, perceive him as alien and do not implore him to bestow a trifle. Even simple information, such as the time or directions, which would cost nothing, are not asked of him. Dickens ends the paragraph with hyperbole. Even the blind men's dogs appeared to know him. The way in which they would tug their owners into doorways and up courts to urge them to avoid him even though blind men would be completely oblivious to his passing by, serves to create a caricature of a man, rather than a realistic human being, 
who is avoided by all. The first two paragraphs of the extract are dominated by the repetition of the word no, which serves to emphasise the extent to which Scrooge ostracises and is ostracised in turn. The final paragraph switches from the negative to the positive, in language if not in tone, with the rhetorical question, but what did Scrooge care? Rather than finding out about what Scrooge is not, we find out what he is. We learn that to be ostracised in this way was the very thing he liked. Dickens uses a metaphor to describe the way in which Scrooge actively avoids human interaction and connection. He prefers to edge his way along the crowded paths of life, which not only evokes the busy thoroughfares of London that have been alluded to in the preceding paragraph, but also communicates his decision to actively lead the life of an outsider in which all human sympathy is bypassed. As he simply states to his nephew, I wish to be left alone. Dickens has set the novel during the festive season to make Scrooge's presentation as an outsider all the more stark. It was during the Victorian period that Christmas underwent a significant transformation, from hardly being recognised at all to becoming the biggest celebration of the year. This holiday is a time of year that usually brings everyone together and breaks down barriers with the recognition that, whatever our station in life, we have one thing in common. We are all mortal. It is a time then when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave. But not Scrooge. He refuses to get involved in the celebrations, going as far as to say that every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Although this response is comical, it is also rather unpleasant. Scrooge doesn't just stop at rejecting any generosity that is offered to him, but he goes even further to turn images of Christmas into ones of violence, serving to emphasise the extent to which he is an outsider at this point in the novel. Earlier in the novel, when Dickens is introducing Scrooge, he describes him as secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. The sibilance of this simile reinforces the idea of secrecy, and the image of an oyster, with its calcified, irregular and impenetrable shell, communicates a sense of a man who is completely closed off from everything and everyone around him. He doesn't accept invitations for social gatherings, even from family members such as his nephew. In fact, we learn that he has valued money over friendship and love from early adulthood, when the woman to whom he is betrothed says, as she releases him from the engagement, another idol has displaced me. He is completely focused on his business to the exclusion of everything else, and this is reflected in his choice of lodgings. When he goes home at night, after a solitary and melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, he is still alone as the other rooms were all let out as offices. Not only does Scrooge choose to live in a building which is associated with business, but this also means that when he comes home, the area is deserted and he has no human contact. On his journey of enlightenment, Scrooge realises that he does in fact care, as he becomes painfully aware of how others see him. The answers which are elicited during the yes-no game, as Scrooge's nephew thinks of his uncle, show that those around him cannot relate to him as a human being, as he is described as a rather disagreeable animal, a savage animal, an animal that growled and grunted sometimes. In the vision he sees courtesy of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, he realises that the women who go to old Joe's find it morally acceptable to steal from him after his death because they do not relate to him as another human being. His avarice has alienated him, and he has wasted his life loving something that cannot love him back. The woman's words, Why wasn't he natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after him when he was struck with death, instead of lying gasping his last there, alone by himself. 
suggests that Scrooge's behaviour is unnatural in his rejection of human relationships, and his words at the beginning of the novel that it is enough for a man to understand his own business and not interfere with other people's come back to haunt him, as the women callously stripping his room and even his corpse say, every person has a right to take care of themselves. He always did. Scrooge's redemption at the end of the novel enables him to lose his outsider status. His feelings, his empathy and his sympathy are shown not to be non-existent, but just buried under a hard, self-imposed shell. The first vision of himself as a solitary child in the schoolroom, neglected by his friends, and whose only companions are the characters from the storybooks he reads, is the chink in his armour, which allows him to begin to feel again. He is further reminded of how happy he used to be as a member of society when he revisits Christmas Eve at the Fezziwigs when he was an apprentice. He then unconsciously tries to join in with the Christmas games at his nephew's house as the positive emotions generated by human interaction are shown to be almost infectious, as he begged like a boy to be allowed to stay until the guests departed. His reconnection with his own feelings and the sympathy that he feels for himself as a child allow him to then feel empathy for the plight of others, which generates a desire to help them. It is only by learning to love himself that he is able once more to feel compassion for others, and it is this that finally allows him to come in from the cold and not be an outsider any more. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on English language topics and exam techniques and English literature texts.